It's now mid-August, everybody, and fall is definitely in the air. Call it a change in the wind, but there are signs that the summer is ending and the summer rally with it. Let's talk about it. Welcome back, everybody, to the channel. Don and Thomas back with you from Market Beat uh, for another Market Beat uh, and Market Outlook preview uh, for the coming week. And we'll take a look back at what happened last week. Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Don. How are you? I'm doing always good. Hey, Thomas, this week, uh, actually the last three weeks, uh, I'm reading your newsletter and you, you're calling for a, a kind of a change in the wind. Uh, that fall is in the air. And, and I think that takes on a different, or at least a, a multiple uh, meanings this week. There Certainly the temperatures will start falling in another month or so, probably where you live, not where I live. Uh, but the market's starting to slide a little bit. Uh, three weeks in a row, the market's down, maybe, I don't know, four, five, six percent down from the, the top. Something that we called and talked about on this very channel uh, some three weeks ago. We're kind of expecting that. Um, the question I think for everybody uh, they want the answer to is, are we going down another five percent or is this something that uh, uh, will just steadily creep down? Where are we going from here, guy? Well, you know, like you said, it looks like we have a, a top in play. You know, the, the summer market melt up uh, was really driven by the fact that the recession never materialized, right? We just kicked the can down the road. But now that the market has reached up to these, these new highs, uh, the specter of recession is really still there. And if you really pay attention, it's a lot uglier than it was before because inflation is still rising. Uh, the Fed is still raising rates, and the minutes this week really should have, but it didn't quite do it, cemented the market's mind that there's going to be one more rate hike and maybe two or three more rate hikes. I mean, that's really the way things are looking. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that the market could continue to contract. The real question is how the next you know round of uh, inflation data comes out. So the S&P 500 is still above that critical 4,300 level, which could provide some pretty good support. Also above the 150-day moving average. If the next PCE report is, you know, coolish, a little bit cool, not super hot or whatever, the market may be able to rally again. But I think it'll just put us right back where we were three weeks ago, which is at a precarious top with inflation in the picture. Let me let me play a, a little bit of a contrarian angle to what you just said here. Uh, I've mentioned this before several times um, on this channel, on this particular uh, um, talk that we have weekly, but it it seems like for all the world to see, at least for Don to see, uh, the market just doesn't care about rate hikes at this point. They they they're either factored in or they just are just ignoring them. I'm with you. I think there's going to be more than one rate hike. Um, you know, if, if, if inflation reaccelerates and, and we both kind of think that it's going to, it's going to take more than one more rate hike. Uh, you agree with that? Or is, is that just me just uh, uh, reading too much into it? I mean, I, I think that it would take several hikes. I think that we're going to be in a high inflation, high interest rate environment for, for quite a while, actually. Um, I don't see them. I don't see him getting out of it. I mean, the 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 biggest driver right now is going to be oil prices. We talked about that. Oil prices are certainly tilted in favor of of higher higher prices. Um, and even if they don't rise significantly, they're not going to go down much. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we we've, we've got inflation for a while. Oil prices is something again. We've talked about that over and over. Um, um, it's another one of those factors that people don't seem to pay attention to, at least in my opinion. Uh, maybe when gas gets up over four gallons again, they'll take notice. But by then, um, everything is going to cost a lot more uh, going forward. So oil mm -hmm. prices definitely uh, is going to play a, a part in what happens for the fall and the remainder of this winter. Uh, what else do you see coming into play uh, headed headed forward? Oil. Well, you now earnings in the retail sector were kind of mixed. Um, there was some outperformance in some different names, but uh, the results throughout the industry point to weakness in the second half. I think that plays into the inflation outlook. Um, you know, Walmart was the big winner, 
It actually mm -hmm. grew, it outperformed, it raised its guidance, but it did so because of its scale and its scope and its ability to give the consumer what it wants, which is groceries and health and beauty products. You know, the discretionary items uh, really weren't uh, in favor. That was really seen in Target's results. Target's Target put out a really bad report, I thought. It's losing right. ground to Walmart in everyday categories and to everybody else in discretionary categories. Um, so there are some winners and losers, but I think that the shifts in the consumer uh, retail sector are, are are pointing to bad things later on in the year. Okay. Um, by the way, folks, uh, we recorded a video that's going to drop uh, that's in, devoted to entirely to the retail market, the retail earnings that have come out, uh, what we anticipate will happen, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, if you will, with the retail market. Uh, they reported heavy this week. There'll be a few more next week, and we're going to talk about those in a few minutes. Um, and stop. Okay. Gosh, I don't want to re re redo the whole retail thing. Let me get down to where I want to be. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. It, it, was, it was unavoidable. I mean, it's fresh in our minds, both of us. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Thomas, let's talk a little bit, if you would, about earnings that are coming out this week. There is one really huge, big name that I think the entire world will be watching. Uh, that's NVIDIA. Uh, we got more retail coming. Kohl's is coming out. Um, tell me what you're seeing there. And and the reason I want to talk about NVIDIA, and please save that one for last, because I think it's going to be the best. All right. The, the entire world, uh, whether you're investing or not, uh, cannot go through a day without hearing about AI, what AI is going to do to the economy, what it's going to do to the markets, what it's going to do to our everyday lives. Um, NVIDIA certainly has the lead in AI kind of, uh, if you will, technology at the moment. So we'll get to that. But tell me what else you see out there. Yeah, well, so other than NVIDIA, really, it's going to be about more, more retail. This week, there'll be uh, Lowe's and Kohl's and Ulta. Lowe's will probably report a lot like Home Depot did, which is kind of mixed with maybe some weakness in the guidance. But I think that Kohl's and Ulta could both perform well, uh, there have been signs from other off-price retailers like uh, the TGX companies mm -hmm. who were able to grow and to beat and to raise guidance and took share from Target in apparel and home goods categories. I think that Kohl's is perfectly positioned for that. They've also been benefiting from their new CEO and the turnaround, and it's got a ridiculously high yield. Kohl's could really pop if it puts out a good report. I think Ross Storage jumped 5% yesterday. Mm -hmm. TGX moved up on its report. I think Colt will move up as well. Um, Ulta. Ulta's also been doing well. It kind of imploded after the last report because it was kind of tepid and it lowered its guidance. But on the, over the long term, Ulta has been resonating with consumers and taking share in the health and or in the beauty categories, which are obviously strong given the results from Target and from Walmart. Mm -hmm. I think that Ulta could also report strongly. Um. Mm -hmm. And its share price is certainly poised to rebound strongly if it does so. I'll tell you what I'm hearing from you. Uh, I've done a couple of videos with you, and we talk every day, as everybody knows. What I'm hearing from you, what I read about on, on the site, the articles that you write for Market Beat, is off-price retailers are kind of leading the charge here. Um, and I think if people will just kind of pay attention a little bit. Uh, we're not financial advisors, but I'll, I'll I'll throw this out there anyway. If people will just pay attention, that's more of a barometer, if you will, on on the broader market and the broader economy. Uh, people can't spend like they were once were. Mm -hmm. um, all that money has kind of dried up that they had, uh, burning a hole in their pocket. Um, you, we've talked about this before. So off price retailers. Um, Take a look at those because you right. may be onto something there. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's talk NVIDIA. Uh, tell me what you see there. Or should I be as excited as I am about this one? Or should I just- I don't know, you know if you should be ex bricks? excited kind of about bricks. it, but it's easy to be in high anticipation of it. NVIDIA really uh, took the world by storm with the last report. 
um, raised its guidance like 50% above the consensus driven by AI demand. So there is a lot of expectation built into this report. The market wants to know if AI is BS or not. I mean, based on the last report, if AI is as hot and spending is as big as they suggested, this this report could it could it could beat their own guidance. They could raise guidance again. I mean, that's that's the kind of expectation that's built into the market. Mm -hmm. So I think that there is a possibility that Nvidia shares might not perform all that well because there's a lot of expectation already built into the market. But I don't I, I don't think AI is um, you know a passing fancy. Uh, it's not a passing fancy. But I do think I do think, and we're going to do a video on this next week. Uh, you guys are going to want to subscribe uh, to the channel, so make sure you're here on this one. But we're going to do an AI uh, video next week, and 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 the the thesis for that video is basically this: what to avoid in AI and what to buy, because um, I think there's a lot of companies out there that are promoting AI that don't really have an AI impact, uh, but it's good for the stock price. Mm -hmm. It's good for their share price. So look forward to that one. <clears throat> right. Well, you know, AI to me is a lot like EV in the automobile industry. Automobile industry is finite. It's not really growing, but EVs are growing within it to take it over. And AI is just a subset of tech that is big and it's hot and some companies will benefit from it now. But the ones that will benefit from it long term are the same blue chip tech companies that have been killing it the whole time. That's it for this week. Thomas, thanks for being here again. We appreciate you week after week uh, uh, offering your insights, uh, your knowledge uh, as a veteran of following stocks, writing about stocks. We appreciate you. Hey, if we did anything to earn uh, a like or subscribe, we'd appreciate that as well. Try to grow the channel. Look for us next week and we'll be back. But until then, Thomas. Remember the trend. We'll see you guys.